Chairman of the full committee, the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Goodlatte. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding this hearing and for the uh, work that you have dedicated to this issue for the last two years. Uh, I want to thank all of our witnesses for being here today. I think you all have compelling uh, testimony, but I especially want to thank Mr. Steinle, who I just had the opportunity to meet. Uh, I told him that uh, uh, the fact that he would come here uh, three weeks after the tragic death of his daughter uh, uh, to me shows uh, courage and determination to make sure that other lives are saved uh, as a result of this. So you have my deepest sympathy, but also my deepest appreciation and admiration for uh, coming here today. And I, I also told Mr. Steinle that uh, my son lives in San Francisco. I have uh, been on that very pier with my son and my daughter. Uh, and uh, uh, we want to make sure that everybody is safe. Last week, this committee held a Department of Homeland Security oversight hearing with Secretary Johnson as the sole witness. Many members focused their questions on sanctuary cities, immigration and customs enforcement detainers, and criminal aliens. And so we have heard much of what the administration has to say about these issues. But today we will hear perspectives on sanctuary policies that are distinctly different than what Secretary Johnson had to offer, and I look forward to that testimony. I'm honored uh, to have the family of Kate Steinle here uh, and Mr. Steinle testifying, and of course their perspective on this issue is one that we wish they never had to contemplate. And the same is true for the countless other victims of criminal aliens that this committee has heard from the past several years, people like Jamil and Anita Shaw, whose son was murdered by a criminal alien gang member who had been released from jail by Los Angeles law enforcement pursuant to Los Angeles sanctuary policy. And people like Sabine uh, Durden, whose son Dominic was killed in a car accident by an illegal immigrant who had two prior DUI convictions. Ms. Durden is here with us uh, this morning. I thank you very much for being here today as well. These tragedies were preventable. This administration must reverse its wholesale and unprecedented shutdown of immigration enforcement. Because the result of that shutdown is that millions of unlawful and criminal aliens are not considered high enough priorities for deportation, they are left in American communities. In fact, in the last year, the number of administrative arrests of criminal aliens has fallen by a third and the department continues to release thousands of such aliens onto our streets. ICE admitted to releasing 30,558 aliens with criminal convictions in 2014. Last week, we publicized ICE data showing the recidivist activity of those criminal aliens. ICE released in 2014. Already, 1,423 have been convicted of new crimes like vehicular homicide, domestic violence, sexual assault, DUI, burglary, and assault, among many others. And no doubt, even more have been arrested for and charged with additional crimes. Secretary Johnson's solution, the Priorities Enforcement Program, is a failure. Even the Secretary admitted last week that five of ICE's Priority A, meaning the worst offending jurisdictions, have refused to participate in PEP and while 33 of the 49 Priority A jurisdictions have apparently agreed to participate, it remains to be seen how fully they will participate. The administration has admitted that when it says a jurisdiction has agreed to participate, that could encompass compliance with only a very small part of PEP. There is a clear answer to this problem. Compliance with ICE detainers must be mandatory. Jurisdictions that violate that policy must suffer consequences, and most importantly, Congress must no longer allow the President the ability to simply turn off the immigration enforcement switch. This committee has passed a bill that addresses all three of those priorities, H.R. 1148, the Michael Davis Jr. and Danny Oliver in honor of State and Local Law Enforcement Act, introduced by Chairman Gowdy. While I look forward to consideration of H.R. 1148 on the floor. Later today, the House will vote on legislation to address one part of the solution to sanctuary cities. That bill is a good first step, and I will support it. I also appreciate the Majority Leader's commitment to me that we will take additional action to ensure compliance with our immigration laws in the future. Today, I look forward to hearing the witnesses' thoughts on how to prevent sanctuary policies and the overwhelming number of crimes committed pursuant to these policies. 
Uh, and I also want to acknowledge that um, um, uh, Mrs. Wilkerson, I think, is here this morning as well. Uh, and she testified before the Senate hearing on Tuesday. So I want to make it clear to everyone that this committee is committed uh, to addressing this, this problem uh, in a, a comprehensive way. And we have um, uh, taken the first step by bringing the bill to the floor today. But that should not be the end. That should be the beginning of our efforts to make sure that American citizens are safe in their cities around the country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman from Virginia yields back.